Andrew Tate, the most Googled man on earth last year. So I don't know where this guy came from. He seemed to pop out of nowhere, which always makes me suspect. Always, always, always makes me a little bit skeptical and makes people seem suspect to me. But my producers one time, they said, you got to watch this guy, Andrew Tate. So I did. I reacted to some of his videos and I said, you know, he's saying things that contradict the, the established liberal dogma. So for that, I guess he ought to be applauded or at least we ought to entertain him. But he's also saying things that seem pretty degenerate. And he, he isn't he a pimp? Doesn't he run a weird sex online business? And that's not good. That's not conservative at all. That should be, that should be discouraged. So then Andrew Tate gets arrested for apparently running a criminal sex trafficking ring. And some people on the right have rushed to his defense. I don't, I don't really know what the defense is. I mean, the defense could be He's not being arrested because he's a sex trafficker. He's being arrested because the libs hate him. Yeah, that could be true. I mean, they let Epstein operate with impunity for years. They don't go after the sexual criminals on their own side. And they promote sex work as real work. So I, I, they, they don't sincerely believe that sex trafficking is a problem. But nevertheless, the question is, did he do these things? Did, did this guy commit crimes? And there's a video that's just come to light of Andrew Tate bragging that his whole business was a scam. Here's maybe this is a bit bad. Here's where the famous would start. So it'd be good. Like I had a lot of girls who worked for me, and the best was like the Ukrainians or the Russians. It was amazing because they'd get some guy fall in love. Da-da-da. They'd arrange today to meet all this. Shit, ah, I need a visa. Okay, get a visa. I need money for a visa. Okay, how much is a visa? It's nine hundred dollars. Oh no, but it's not nine hundred dollars because I went to the embassy. They think I'm a, a risk, and I need a, a return flight there and back, and I need a hotel. And I need to have spending money in my bank account. They won't let me come. Or how much you need? All right, 10 grand. Boom, 10 Gs. Boom, bang, thanks. Wow. Go to the embassy, take a picture outside the embassy. Boom, come back. They rejected my visa. They said we have to wait two weeks. After two weeks, they'll give it to me. Okay, baby, boom. Two more weeks of tips. Boom, 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 boom. Because now he thinks he's going to f***, right? He thinks he get the girls. Now he's spending more than ever. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Two weeks come. Some other problem. Whether it's visa, whatever, whatever. We make up some bullshit. Right, all just, these OnlyFans chicks can learn from you, man. Oh, no, man, no, but you know, like a free people, people, people watch free people, OnlyFans tutorial. Yeah, here people, the, who, people, DMs. people would say, "Why did those girls work for you?" Because the girls would work for me, and at fifty percent, because it was fifty fifty, would make millions per month. If they worked for themselves, they'd make nothing. I was the best in the game. What? Me and I had a whole team of staff. Now, one thing you always have to ask yourself with online self help guru promoter guys like this is, are they telling the truth? And we have no reason to believe that Andrew Tate is telling the truth because the thing that he is talking about is how he's a liar. So if you present yourself in public as a liar, then I can't believe you. In fact, I can't even believe any specific claim of you lying and scamming because you might, though you are dishonest in other ways and claiming to be dishonest, you you may actually be being uh, truthful or, or dishonest about being dishonest, you see how it gets very confusing. But but if this part is true, and he's the best in the effing game, and I'm scamming all these guys, then isn't that fraud? Isn't that a crime? Isn't that, should we really be surprised that you get arrested? And even if you say, well, there's plenty of scammers, plenty of fraudsters, plenty of pimps out there, they don't get attacked by the liberal regime. Right, but you're you've made a name for yourself attacking all these liberal orthodoxies. Meanwhile, you're bragging about all the crimes that you're committing. So you're just showing your neck to your enemies. Not very good stuff. In any case, none of this particularly virtuous or worth emulating, I strongly suspect. This is the most disturbing story that I have read in weeks. If if you've got little kids listening right now, maybe just skip ahead a minute or two. Last Friday, 11 people appeared before the high court in Glasgow accused of operating a satanic cult which abused two young girls and a boy who were allegedly forced to engage in rich witchcraft rituals and subjected to sexual and violent abuse by members of the group. The uh, court heard testimony that the two young girls and the young boy had been forced to kill animals, use a Ouija board or a similar sort of tool, quote, to call on spirits and demons in witchcraft ceremonies, the children were then forced into performing satanic seances, including drinking blood and eating a heart. One of the alleged girl victims was reported to have been locked in a fridge, a freezer, a microwave, and an oven in an attempt to kill her. Okay, that's the disturbing stuff. You can can raise the volume back up again if you're listening with young children. Obviously, 
an insanely disturbing story. But the, the point of the story that is going to be discussed, if it is discussed at all in the liberal media, is that there was this pedophile ring and they abused children sexually. That part is actually the easiest part to understand. It's easy for people in our modern liberal decadent age to recognize that, that sex is a powerful motivator and some people are perverts and, and people can commit sex crimes. That part, it's disturbing to anybody with even a shred of a conscience, but it's, it's at least easy to understand. The part that's very difficult for people to understand in our modern liberal scientific age is the satanic witchcraft occult ritual of it all. That part people have a really hard time getting. They say, look, I understand how a pervert could want to commit a sexual crime. Why the hell did they pull out a Ouija board? Why were they doing weird witchcraft stuff? Why were they calling up? That can't be real. That doesn't, the hard part to understand isn't the pedophile stuff. It's the satanic stuff. Because even the libs, even the people who are trying to normalize pedophilia, I, I suppose perhaps especially the people who are trying to normalize pedophilia and, and refer to pedophiles as minor attracted persons and all the rest of it, they believe in pedophilia. They, everybody be- believes that exists. Half of the people around today, maybe more, do not believe that Satan exists. I always go back to this amazing interview in New York Magazine in 2011, I think it was, between some young, know-nothing liberal reporter and Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, the conservative. And somehow heaven and hell came up. And the reporter goes, do you believe in heaven and hell? And he goes, yeah. And she goes, well, that's got to be awful scary to live in a world with hell. And he goes, you know, in a theatrical whisper. He says, I even believe in the devil. She goes, well, boy, you got to be shaking in your boots believing in the devil. He goes, do you know how out of touch you seem? Do you realize that people throughout all of history have believed in the devil? Do you realize that many more intelligent people than you or I believe in the devil? And she didn't know what to say. I always go back to Hamlet. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. And I can't help but notice when when you read these stories of the pedo sex rings that we were all told were total conspiracy theories until they keep being proven again and again and again, including some of the most prominent, wealthy, powerful people in the world. You can't call it a crazy conspiracy theory after the Jeffrey Epstein stuff came to light. But I can't help but notice it always seems to involve something more than just the physical body. You look at Jeffrey Epstein's weird pedo island, there's this bizarre pagan Egyptian temple looking thing there. You look at the cases of sexual abuse in in religious communities, in non-religious communities, it always seems to involve weird occult rituals. The stories one hears about this from people who have been convicted of it very often goes back to Satan. I wonder why that is wonder why that is. Why does it always keep coming back to the same sort of imagery? Maybe it's because many more intelligent people than you and I have believed in the devil. You know, the rest of the show continues now. You do not want to miss it. Become a member and use code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S at checkout for two months free on all annual plans.